Yes, good morning, uh, Mr. Greifenberg. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. My name is uh, Christian Pahl. I'm the CEO of uh, Unidevice, and uh, we are in the business of wholesale of um, high-end um, devices, electronic devices, mainly from Apple. And as we do more back-to-back -back business than normal wholesalers, we, um, we have um, a very differentiating point in our business model. Of course, all the explanations are not an investment in advice. And here you see our uh, mission. Um, we are profiting from innovation. So the digitization of private and professional life now with 5G gives us all a new edge. And uh, we are working with this. Um, we consider us as a broker more than a wholesaler because we are very successful in back-to-back -back order flow. So when we get an order in the morning, we care for organizing um, the supply. So this goes hand in hand. So we have a very fast turnover of our products, three to eight days in inventory. And that's why we are more um, seen as a broker in uh, consumer electronics than a wholesaler. Some words about the business model, the market development, finances, and an outlook. And here again, you see our best moving products. Uh, the best one is the iPhone and then the Apple Watch. Um, these are the best products for us. We are a company with about 22 people located in the Berlin area and in the Kassel area. In Kassel, we have our central warehouse and all products come to Kassel. And uh, when we have them, then we ship them. I joined the company in 2017. And in 2016, we had 135 million revenue. In 2021, this grew with an average increase of 21% per year to 348 million. And the earnings before interest and tax were 760,000 euro in 2016 and above 3 million in 2021. For 2022, we now have preliminary and unaudited numbers, which present sales of 460 million and earnings before interest and tax of uh, below, just below 5 million euro. So we have a continuous good development. When we see here beside um, Apple also Samsung, Huawei, Xiaomi, I would like to add a comment on that. We have also a little bit now uh, volume in Samsung, but uh, Samsung devices um, have more risk. Uh, with Apple, when um, everything runs uh, very smooth, we have two or three new main models per year. And with Samsung, um, there are, let's say, 30 new smartphones uh, per year. So every second week, you see a new Samsung smartphone and uh, on the market, and they don't come to all European markets at the same time. So sometimes you get an offer from another wholesaler and you wonder, wow, they are so attractive, these prices. And you see in your uh, own market at, um, only weeks afterwards that new models came in that are cannibalizing old existing models. So Apple is um, the cherry um, and uh, we pick still uh, the best product uh, with the highest price stability and the strongest loyalty um, from consumers, which is uh, Apple. Uh, who are why is under scrutiny um, because they just don't only sell smartphones and other devices, but also um, the infrastructure where there is belief this could be used by the Chinese government for spionage. So who are why is um, under a lot of scrutiny. So we don't have any who are why business. And Xiaomi, we also don't have any um, business, but they are not so much under scrutiny. It's just that Apple is uh, the most stable um, uh, price product line and has the highest loyalty uh, from their consumers. Here, a little bit an overview 
regarding the customers. Our customers don't get the products from China. They are already in Europe where we buy them from distributors. And so we are, mus uh, we are much quicker than a normal order. Let's say if a telephone company or a B2C chain like notebooksbilliger.de would buy from a distributor, it would take the normal lead time from China. And from us, they get the products in two to three days with a little bit of price advantage on that. And uh, that makes it um, very interesting um, in the optimization of uh, the inventory for our customer, which is, let's say, um, a small uh, telephone company or a B2C uh, chain. Our suppliers are distributors in other countries within the European Union, which have a small price advantage, not a big one. Of course, Apple earns the big chunk always um, as the manufacturer of the gross margin. And the distributors and, and us, we only earn a very small trading margin, but at least we earn this every week because we have a very fast turnover. That's the beauty of our business. And um, the supplier that would sell to us, let's say it would be a um, distributor from Italy. Within Italy, they have very long payment terms. So this um, distributor who sells to us would get in his country the money only after 90 days or even a longer period. And from us, he gets it immediately. So this cash flow advantage is the big driver why we are a very preferred customer for distributors. We don't want to have a distributor license from Apple ourselves because this would cost a very big investment um, and we would be then um, bond to that label. And um, of course, we know that Apple is fantastic. Since 2009, we are in that business, but the world changes and you never know if someone else gets big and more attractive, um, even more so in technical devices. Um, so we rather don't invest um, a lot of money in a distributor license, but we are very happy to be able to buy and sell every day without the requirement of buying everything uh, they have. Um, we know from distributors that sometimes the container is filled with products they don't like. And I have here an example, the iPhone in red works in certain markets, but not at all in all markets. And it could be that a distributor orders from Apple only products in silver, in black, in white, which are the most used and common colors, but they also get something in red just to make the container full and to the same price, they are not cheaper. And we buy them, for example, from the distributor and we are able to sell it in another country where the color is accepted by the consumers and paid for in full price. So we are delivering two aspects to the markets. One is a faster cash flow, and the other one is to help to distribute products which are needed to the respective customer who has at the certain point of time the need for the product. Uh, because in a general view, smartphones are a giveaway for telephone companies. So normally a person subscribes for another 36 month period uh, with a telephone uh, company um, in every country might be different 24 to 48 months and then gets a new iPhone and pays per month a certain monthly amount, but not the full, let's say 1000 euro or 800 euro, whatever uh, the product might uh, need. So it is very expensive. It's a giveaway to make the subscription of a telephone contract. And um, that means that the telephone companies only want to have as little inventory as possible. And because we deliver within a couple of days, uh, this is highly appreciated by many uh, telephone companies. Here, um, another way to look at it. So we focus clearly on Apple, but because we don't, we did not pay distributor license, we are able to switch whenever another product line becomes um, the best product line to, to others because 
we don't have this investment and um, the distributors are common with all the major um, manufacturers and we buy and as i said also a little bit of samsung but very carefully and uh, from the distributors and then we sell to wholesalers retailers and telephone companies and um, normally they have a certain mix from products which they buy directly from the distributors and a part they buy from us here you see a, a little bit an overview Unidevice owns 100% of PPA International, which is our operative uh, company, which is known in the electronics market for buying and selling, for being a wholesaler, but a very fast one, so more a broker. And you see here in the area of Kassel, we have our service company with a warehouse where the products are received, controlled, checked, and then shipped uh, to the customer. My colleague Hamid Samjam is one of the founders, and he's the, since 2013 with the company as a board member, and he's a very experienced uh, person, and uh, I'm very grateful to work with him and uh, the other 21 colleagues uh, we have on board, and we are very international. Um, we have about 11 languages spoken within the team, so that's very strong. Um, because we don't only sell in Germany, also to other European um, membership countries, so EU countries, but also um, depending on the strength of the euro compared to the dollar, it could be that we buy in the US or that we sell to the US, uh, because Apple does not always track and correct the prices according to changes in the currency um, relation, euro to dollar. So there we have also an option uh, which we use for arbitrage. Here a little bit uh, milestones, 2009, the business was started uh, in that way and uh, developed very good to what was mentioned before in 2021, 348 million sales, which according to our preliminary numbers for 2022 is now 460 million. And um, the value of optimization in supply chain was there and still is there. Um, you always have the need to have as low inventory as possible and getting the product as soon as possible within two or three days. So then if, if you see as a telephone company, all oh, my customers, do not want, like I thought, I planned on the numbers of the quarter before, let's say with a certain graphic card or a certain camera in the phone or a certain color of the phone. Now, for whatever reason, other uh, models are requested, um, then they get them from us um, quicker than from a normal distributor and at a little bit more favorable price. A little bit about the market development. Um, worldwide, we have um, sales of about 1.2 billion units of smartphones, and in Germany of about 22 million. We are selling about half a million units, so we have a very, very tiny uh, market share. Um, this does not relate to only Germany, but uh, we have to see that we sell internationally. So. It could be that uh, we sell more than half of our products um, products out of uh, Germany. And 90% of our sales are smartphone sales. So we have, of course, a very stable market. Um, nearly everyone owns uh, in Western Europe uh, a smartphone. Um, but uh, the new developments um, like 5G and better cameras and uh, overall better products uh, make it um, interesting for people to upgrade to a new model. So this still works. And interestingly, um, we see that um, second half year of last year and also now what we see in January, February, um, the people buy the even most expensive products. So when the iPhone 14 came out um, last year, 
we did not sell as much of uh, the basic um, model, but more over proportional uh, a lot of the more expensive uh, plus and pro max models. So that's very interesting that um, the Apple loyalty customers want uh, the best products um, over proportionally since iPhone 14 came out last year. Here you can see that um, um, there is not a lot of growth um, in the market um, in, in Europe and uh, in Germany, um, but we grow over proportional. So in 2022, yes, 2022, last year, uh, we had more than 30% sales growth. So it, it, it is possible with in a market which itself is very big, let's say 86 billion euro revenue uh, in the European Union, and um, to, to have a big growth within that, um, if this um, international wholesale is um, on a small level compared to the very big market volume. So I see for us plenty of room for, for further growth uh, within this very large multi-billion euro market. The prices go up. So um, the average smartphone in Europe is at about 460 euro and in Germany a little bit more, 550 euro. Within Germany, we can also see that uh, purchase power has a big influence on uh, the label that is bought. So in the Eastern part of Germany, uh, the Apple dominance is lower than in the Western part of Germany. And um, within um, other countries in the European Union, you see also um, a fluctuation between uh, Samsung with uh, Samsung, of course, they have uh, the lower and the higher end price models. And um, in other countries, you can see that they spend less and where the purchase power is higher, they spend more. And um, when Apple cracked the 1000 euro with iPhone 10, um, I was very surprised. I thought, wow, that's a, that's a lot of money. Um, and um, so you see that um, even with an average of uh, 550 euro per smartphone in Germany, many people spend 1300 euro. And um, so it's very interesting uh, high end uh, product range. We have growth in these so-called wearable devices worldwide. So people buy more and more smart watches that um, have um, then the possibility to share data with uh, smartphones, body cameras, and um, different kinds of displays. And uh, from Apple, the next big thing is expected to be um, um, a certain um, virtual reality, um, now no, I'm, I'm missing the word for that and it's, it's not there. Um, yeah, we'll come, we'll come later. So virtual reality device, and um, this should bring us also further growth. Regarding the finances, this is only preliminary. We have um, in our balance sheet, a company value of, uh, let's say, a little bit uh, below 15 million euro for the integration of PPA International, which does the operational uh, business. And uh, trade receivables are about 6.5 million. This is uh, not so much when you see that we have 460 million sales. So there you can see that we are selling our inventory uh, quite uh, rapidly. And also the inventory at uh, the end of December of about uh, 11 million, this is only a third or less of uh, a monthly sales number. We had a record sales in November, which is um, the last year's always the best a month in a year with 63 million euro in the month of November. And uh, there we have uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and they are big marketing events with uh, a lot of sales, um, very interesting. So um, you can see that we are turning 
quickly our inventory in these numbers. Our sales uh, development was strong, more than 30%. Our EBIT uh, development was also very strong, um, but these are um, only preliminary numbers for 2022 uh, and still unaudited. And uh, here you can see that we are working with a tiny gross margin of, let's say, a little bit above 2%. But that we make an earnings before interest and tax and EBIT margin of about 1% out of that. The outlook 5G will once again give mobile communication a boost. So uh, there's um, a strong demand for uh, um, 5G, and we think um, people will appreciate it more and more and uh, will have an incentive to change for new models because old models um, are not able to use 5G. So whenever someone lives in a city where 5G is available, he needs uh, a new iPhone um, or a new Samsung product um, because with old models, uh, he cannot use 5G. He needs the special new semiconductor chip uh, in that. So, and here we have <laughs> the word uh, that I missed before. So the Apple glasses or virtual reality glasses might launch uh, this year or next year. And um, many people think that uh, this will, will be the next big thing. And uh, we would gladly trade uh, with that new product and hope that this will be very successful. Yes, I think I may be a, a few minutes um, before scheduled um, through that presentation. So that's for the moment what I wanted to present. And uh, of course, I'm happy to, to answer questions. Mr. Paul, thank you very much. There are already some questions in the chat. Um, first of all, you had a successful year of 2022. What is the outlook for 2023 and what are the main drivers for success? Yes. So in 2022, even though we had a record sales volume of 460 million, the first quarter was weak. Um, and um, uh, so we have in 2023 um, already the knowledge that in January we were 16% above prior year January. And uh, for February, of course, we only are half in, but I see also um, uh, a comparable situation that we will have higher numbers in February. So for the first quarter, I'm very confident that we will be above prior year. The second quarter was also um, not so um, unachievable to um, over exceed. So I'm, I'm looking forward also for the second quarter. But in the third and fourth quarter, I have to admit that last year was very strong. Uh, so we have to make um, even higher records um, this year in November, December. And um, I thought that um, inflation, the reduction of purchase power should have an impact on us in Q4, but it did not have. And um, a big reason for that maybe is that let's say 80% of the consumers don't buy cash, um, the iPhone. They buy it um, with a monthly installment over 36 months. So the uh, telephone companies, what, what I said as a giveaway, that, that need um, the iPhone to, to make um, the subscription model working for the telecommunication contracts, they have, of course, a very cheap access to capital markets and, and they can pay and um, finance um, the very expensive smartphones and the consumer prefers then to pay with a subscription model. So that might be a big influence while we are not suffering a decline in our uh, cu uh, customer and consumer uh, demand. So I'm um, looking forward that we can uh, very easily um, overachieve uh, Q1 numbers of the prior year. I'm very confident for Q2, Q2, but I have respect for our numbers of Q3 and Q4. Um, but overall, we should be above prior year at the end. That's my expectation. And normally it should also be with a profit because we um, achieve, let's say, 1% EBIT margin, and that should remain stable. Okay. 
And um, there are actually two questions about this. Um, last year, you published monthly business numbers. And uh, when will they be published for January this year? Yeah, normally I should stick to, um, to quarterly reporting. Um, I just feel the responsibility if something unexpected, positive or negative happens that I then report on that, right? Mm -hmm. So there are certain months where something happened, let's say um, March uh, 2020, um, when we had um, uh, the COVID-19 happening and we saw that uh, containers do not arrive anymore. Uh, then I had uh, to make an emergency um, uh, information about that. Or when I saw that uh, November uh, last year was extreme with 63 million revenue in one month, a record, and we had two other records, I also then want, wanted to communicate about that because it was e extraordinary. But now with 16% above prior year January, that's good, but that's not... I would say as uh, important uh, um, it, a fluctuation that I should make um, a, a monthly um, investor news uh, on that. I, I rather would like to wait for the full first quarter to then make the regular information about uh, the first quarter. And uh, how does the exchange rate of US dollar and euro uh, affect the business? Yes, it boosted uh, the business big time in Q3, I have to admit, um, when we had the situation that uh, the euro was below the parity to the dollar, so below one dollar, uh, we nearly, so we, we sold very little in Germany and the European Union, and we sold um, to US dollar areas, being it um, the US or being it uh, Dubai. So that uh, was uh, very, very helpful. Uh, we still sell a lot uh, to Dubai now with uh, the 107 exchange rate, uh, dollar to euro, uh, but it's not the boost it was before, but still our customers in Germany and the European Union are there. So they're, they're, now they are getting more of the products. Okay. Uh, looking at the time, uh, one last question. So if the VR glasses of Apple become popular, do you plan to also include the competitors into your project, uh, for example, the, uh, the Quest or Pico? No, not so much, to be honest. Uh, we would uh, stick with Apple and maybe um, add more Samsung um, because we are getting uh, the products um, from sources uh, which we know very well and um, our customers would be the same for Apple and Samsung uh, but uh, with a, a different um, manufacturer um, at this point of time um, I'm, I'm not sure that this would be so attractive but it always depends on prices and volumes if, if there is a lot of demand in our Customers, let's say notebooks billiger.de, for example, as a B2C chain, uh, would demand and we would have good access, then I could imagine that. But the first place would be virtual reality glasses from Apple and Samsung. Okay. Mr. Paul, thank you very much. Time is up. Yes. Thank you to the audience. Thank you, Mr. Greifenberger. Thank you very much.